Hello, this is James Howell showing off Caro Blaster by Daisuke Amaya, who goes by the handle Pixel, and Kyoko Kawanaka, uh, localized by Playism. And, uh, also, that's you. Oh, also, I'm here! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I recently uh, got to see a, bu a bunch of Caro Blaster, because you've been super into it lately, and it's a super cute game with, like, a lot of really, uh, uh, I don't know, just fun stuff in it. Yeah, the game is, I mean, you can clear it in about two hours. I think my first save file was about, like, five, six hours of game time long. Um, and just running through it, knowing exactly what to do and everything, which is kind of what we're going to see in this playthrough. Do, um, is that is that including your hard mode uh, playthrough, no, like those two hours? No, I, I'm sorry, I was just thinking about the... Um, uh, the initial release had just the regular game mode and then omake mode, which is, uh, omake means extra, and it's uh, basically the regular game with a couple of extra levels that you can get a special gun in, and uh, and also a boss rush mode at the very end. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's what all the reviews were about. Then in twenty and that was in twenty fourteen. Then in twenty fifteen, they came along and released Zangyo mode. Zangyo, Zangyo. means just Sounds salary man. super intense. Man. It is super intense. It is salary man overtime. Oh God. Yeah, I know. If you think overtime is bad, salary man overtime is. Oh man. I but, cannot imagine how bad it is. That is putting your nose to the brimstone. In fairness to the game, a lot of the reviews and a lot of its reputation owes to an earlier release that doesn't count in to factor in the the hard uh. mode, which is really hard. I really like that they 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 play up a lot of the mechanical nuances and require a bit more uh, expertise. I have put cumulatively, according to my Steam log, 26 hours in it so far, and uh, got to be putting several more into it. Uh, you know, finishing off the last of the challenges. Nice. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of it. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard not to be a fan of it. Uh, just looking at it, it's just, I mean, right off the bat, it's got a cute little style to it, where you're playing as a frog who runs around and shoots stuff. Yeah, and at first I thought the frog was a custodian, because it's like this little cat, this this company, Cat and Frog, which we're kind of now looking at their little shop, which he goes into via a magic bubble. Which actually, I have got a I've got a theory about that magic bubble and the way it's presented. Really? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, something that you might notice, uh, and people will have to rewind a little bit at this point, but around the bubble, the cat and frog bubble, there's always a little bit of pixelation where the natural environment's colors are a little bit distorted. Yeah. And you'll notice that, of course, the thing about the cat and frog shop there is the frog teleports. So it's not like they have, like, a shop in every location. They've got, like, one shop, one central shop, that the frog teleports back to. Uh, and, uh, you know, teleportation is, like, a big way of this, the way this company, you know, does their business. So it's like the pixelation... Uh, it, it uses video gameness, uh, kind of like breaking the video game world a little bit to suggest like a tear in reality, kind of like a wormhole kind of thing. Uh -huh. And I mean, I don't think it's being video gamey for the sake of calling attention to the fact that it's a video game. I think it's doing something a lot more interesting than that. But yeah. it, it's using that for another purpose, I guess. Um, but yeah, like it gets all pixelated and when reality starts to tear, the color palette starts screwing up in ways that like an old... Uh, uh, cart-based uh, 8-bit game would, when, you know, you, you pop it in, it's not quite aligned right. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it gets that sort of uh, distortion, that sort of visual distortion when things start to screw up. And, uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, I think that that's that is cool. significant in the story. <gasps> the first boss! The first boss, yes. Uh, some sort of... Mecha Peach? Mecha peach, mecha flower. It looks like a flower on the inside. Yeah. Like a tulip kind of thing. Breathes fire on. with yeah. its lips. That thing's got to be a bad kisser. Ha! <laughs> oh, jeez. I call it hot lips. Uh, now, I didn't see at the start of this. Is this... Okay, no, this is normal mode. This is normal mode. <laughs> yes, this is normal mode. I'm going to be doing a playthrough later of... Um, going to be doing a playthrough later of uh, t t uh, Zangyo mode, but this is the normal playthrough, kind of the challenge on this one. 
Uh, you start out with four hearts. In... I'm sorry, you start out with two hearts. Yeah. And you can upgrade uh, your guns, and you can upgrade your life to more than that. Uh, this is a special achievement called Save the Gas, where you beat the game without using, with, without upgrading your hearts. So that's oh. what this is about. Oh wow, the boss is looking gross. Yeah, the boss gets pretty bloated in this. I don't know. You've seen this a few times. What do you think that is? Um. Jeez. Like, what does it make you think of? Uh. Gosh, right off the bat, I think she's, like, holding too much in. Like, emotionally or mentally or something. Yeah. And it's kind of like Ron. Yeah, I can... yeah that's like Rod she's got is the a really flies good word on her. For it. <clears throat> yeah, like um Yeah, like the kind of decomposition kind of yeah. aesthetic. Which is I think like the little black things that you are uh, destroying, I think the cat technician says at one point that there are supposed to be parts of your past that you've cast off or something. I don't know if that's like I don't I, I, Literal I haven't or Yeah, or if it's like like I don't know, I feel like the game rides this line between having some sort of metaphoric or symbolic content mm -hmm. and then just having a concrete story. Yeah. So it's like it's like the boss has one of those black things that are the pieces of cast off past, has one of those things as a pet in an aquarium behind her, and as she gets more bloated and, you know, kind of that decomposition aesthetic, um, and as the game goes on, uh -huh. um, like that thing keeps getting bigger and bigger, so that thing's growth parallels hers. And uh, so, yeah, that thing's growth parallels hers. Uh, the story has uh, something to do, I guess, perhaps with her mindset. You know, part of this is uh, a lot of this is her story that we're watching in a weird uh, way. And uh, but beyond that, I'm yeah, not sure, uh, sure what to make of it. Isn't there like kind of a isn't there kind of a cutback to uh, her life in hard mode? Yeah, yeah, you get to see kind of her origin story and uh, kind of maybe the company's origin story where um, she used to work for a company that just relied upon soulless, grinding labor. Oh, here, here, this is an example of the palette distortion. Oh, yeah, like on the, whoa! Yeah. On the flowers below it, that's nuts. Yeah, yeah, and it, it happens in other spots too. But, um... But yeah, so like she used to work for this soulless, uh, you know, uh, corporation that did work with a capital W. Like you might, you know, like when you're a kid, you think adults go to work and there's paperwork produced, and uh, they come home and complain about it. And that's that's kind of like the image of work that you kind of get from this thing. It's kind of a very kid's idea of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, so that's kind of the background that she came from. Uh, this is kind of get the feeling that this is an independent small business. Uh, they're on the, they've got a rooftop, um, uh, they've got a rooftop office and they have, uh, you know, a, a tech facility in the basement of their building. I don't know much about how, uh, prestige is attached to office locations, uh, in, you know, in, in, in Japanese sort of salary man culture, mm -hmm. but uh, it suggests kind of like a marginal thing like they're really small they're really starting out they've got a total of four employees uh each member is fulfilling it's kind of like the bare bones of a business you've got the president the executive you've got the office lady the secretarial then you've got the cat who's the technician and then you've got the salary man who is the you know boots on the ground so to speak yeah. and literally uh this guy kind of, this little frog kind of doubles as uh, salary man slash custodian uh, because his expertise is custodial sciences. Which appears but, um, to include shooting things, and that's about it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's... Um... His, uh... Like, it's kind of funny, like, that, they, you know, it's called Custodial Sciences, and I don't know if that's, like, a pun, in a way, on, like, the fact that a lot of times when there's something that screws up, somebody goes in as, quote-unquote, a cleanup crew, or... Because oh. it's, like... Oh, yeah. I, uh, had the good fortune of having a plot-given, uh extra heart container there, so I don't rely Yay. on those, but that was nice to have. Um, Is there, like, an achievement for having that till the end of the game? No. No, no achievement for that. Oh, wow. I figured there would be, because that sounds like it'd be really tough. Uh, now, there's, uh, they're pretty bare bones on, uh, on the achievements, but they make them count. It's not just like, you upgraded a weapon to Max. complete yeah. capacity, so they're, yeah, they're meaningful, I guess, in terms of, like, presenting challenges to the player. But, uh, but yeah, like, these, uh, like, okay, their business is something, but it apparently relies upon these teleporters out to these locations that are kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and these places that they go to are all abandoned or breaking yeah. down or just so it's like oh yeah here's the boss said like something i guess like if you kind of like take that idea of like that thing that that thing or those things being like pieces of your past that you're casting off it's like she becomes a worse president and then when she becomes like by i guess like if the bloating is like connoting like being a worse president or you know being uh being yeah. sort of uh, incapacitated then uh she's starts talking apparently exclusively about those cast off past things yeah so it's like her leadership is like compromised by the baggage that she brings from her previous company maybe that makes sense Like, she's dwelling on it too much and can't focus on the present or something? Yeah. Yeah, it's like... It's... I mean, it's like the... Her little pet... Uh, her little pet... You know, piece of cast-off memories is literally in the back of her head. Oh, yeah, true. Oh, wow. Right behind her. But yeah, so, like, their business is to, like, go... Their clients are apparently people who have these, um, you know, out of the way, destroyed places. Yeah. Um, I I was kind of wondering if like if these were for clients or if these were like their teleporters that they uh, or something. Like, um, huh? Do you mean like the clients have teleporters or no, are you no. thinking like the cat no and frog at all? owns these teleporters and that like they're cleaning up their own teleporters or something i don't know oh i think that that is what the frog is doing i think the frog is cleaning up like i think the frog is cleaning up teleporters that the they owe oh i meant i i intended to uh remove Oh wait, never mind. Sorry, I did remove most of my deaths from this playthrough just for the sake of keeping it clean. There was one that I left in, but I thought it was there, but it's not. Anyway, uh -huh. um, but yeah, my like my my feeling on that is that that that's what I think it is too. I think that these are their teleporters yeah, yeah. that they're cleaning up. But it's like I wonder if these are like facilities that they own or if they're facilities that other people own where things are I mean in each location things are clearly overgrown or neglected or untended like here you've got an old hotel that's crumbling and you look in the underside of it and there are all these uh, critters uh, you know moles I guess uh, destroying the foundations yeah uh, are, are like most of the enemies moles uh, in this area, it's a it's a toss up between them being moles and fish type things because uh, or underwater creatures yeah. because it's like literally the basement is flooded. Yeah, 
which is what you got right here. Oh, do you see the dithering there? Uh, yeah, yeah. Where it's like turning red, pink, kind of. Yeah. But yeah, so it's like you've got different stages of like property ownership hell here. Yeah. Uh, you have uh, you have a foundation full of rodents, and then below that you've got uh, uh, you've got everything covered in water. And I mean, and there's even like uh, there's even like bookcases and stuff like that, like what we're seeing here. Yeah. This place is not doing well. And also, it's called, uh, I think it's called XOXO Hotel, like XOXO being, uh... Hugs and kisses? <laughs> well, that would be a, uh, that would be a particular kind of hotel. Yeah, uh, that's kind of what I thought it was, since it's like, that's pretty ingrained in Japanese culture, like the love hotel sort of thing. Oh! I didn't even think about that. I, I thought it was just like, um... XOXO being um, placeholder for uh, you know, like I guess like what where we would in English write Company X. Oh yeah, yeah. Or Mister X, whereas and I think in in a lot of Japanese script they write like Mister, and then they'll just have a big zero there, uh. just as kind of like a placeholder to to show that they are omitting something. Yeah. And I guess we use like X in the same fashion there. Yeah, this is the hotel that will not be named. That was my reading on it. But the love hotel thing is also uh, totally plausible since they do... Um, I don't know. Some of their work seems to be... I mean, it seems like they're taking what work they can get, and so it's maybe a little seedy. Yeah. Why would a, why would a love hotel have teleporters? Client discretion? That's fair. <laughs> they haven't done a very good job maintaining the place. No, they keep. I mean, why giant would they... tires with laser trip wires? I know this is uh, this is a very strangely themed love hotel. Yeah, some if people that like some case. thrills. <laughs> and this is where you know your insurance is really going to pits when you've got a giant lightning attack based fish yeah that's know, their insurance does specifically does not cover that no well, that's true gotta have a really hard time getting a contract I mean ultimately if you've got enough money anything can be insured but true, true. you're gonna have to go to some pretty back alley uh, companies to cover this especially when it especially when the fish gets red <laughs> oh shoot oh it gets red Oh, yep. they're going to hate that. No, the premiums are going right through the roof on this one. Yeah. This is the first boss in this game in terms of like playing uh in terms of gameplay and stuff. This is the first boss where it's like the difficulty really ramps up because it has a lot of projectiles. Yeah. Uh, it, and especially in its second phase, like it just starts shooting a lot of stuff at you really fast. You've got the fish jumping up out of the ground and uh this is kind of like, for me anyway, when I played through, this was the uh, the first test of like how well I understood the game. Yeah, like the flow of the game? Yeah. Yeah. It definitely looked a lot harder than the first, like the numerically first one. Whoa, boss! Yeah, oh man, your, yep. Your sunglasses oh, fell gross. off. Oh, gross! What was that? I think those were her sunglasses. <laughs> okay! Okay. I thought that was some sort of, like, Her nose? snot ooze oh, kind oh. of, like, you know, like, end of Stranger Things. Well, I'm not going to spoil that for anybody yeah. um, who's watching. Um, and anyway, um, but yeah, I really like how it's like the president is, like, really not doing well, but the company is so well run and everybody is so on on mark that they're able to carry the company even with like the lapse of leadership yeah yeah that cat like that black cat seems to do a, a pretty good job of like keeping everything running yeah that cat is uh that cat does some good tech stuff 
Oh, do you see the little blue spots right there on the ground? Uh huh. That is. Uh, uh, I didn't show it here, but you can actually jump down there. What? Uh, yeah, you can jump down that pit, and there's a little extra area down there. Uh, on Omake mode, uh, you can jump down there and access a secret level where Whoa. you get one piece of the secret kind of uber weapon. And That's really cool. Yeah, the level, the way that level is, um, the way that level is set up is it's basically a bunch of really, really glitchy visuals. Yeah. It, it, it really is like you're playing through the game, you know, when your cart system it has misloaded the, uh, the software. Um, and that's the way that it's designed. So that's kind of like where reality is breaking. Yeah. And that is it's using the same effect there that it uses where you're going into the bubble to, to teleport back so it's like something ain't right about the technology they're using for those bubbles whoa that's cool I mean I imagine that like creating teleporters is probably not the most environmentally th friendly thing around uh, I, I feel very sure that it's taking a risk that uh, we probably don't want to know the consequences of. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I personally, do, I, I personally try to think about global warming only as much as I absolutely have to to remain aware that I should be afraid. I don't even want to start including teleporters. Teleport, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Teleport corruption of time and space. Yeah, that seems... That seems less fixable. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, God should have blown on the cart before he started this one up. Oh, come on, God. Yeah. I think this is where I died and forgot to edit out the, the death. But it's a good death. It's a death it's in a the... It's a good death? Uh, it's a good death. By which I mean it's foolish. Which oh, the best. no. No, it's the, the, the foolish deaths are the ones to. Those are the best one, best ones. I'm not. I can't back that up, but. <laughs> Ooh. See that extra life down there that popped up? Yes. That was the bait. Oh like, no! I'm gonna go for I it. I see you going for it. You're like, I need that. I need that. I know. Oh, ah, but oh, my judgment no. was poor. This is a smarter, wiser Kerotan. <laughs> but yeah, like, I don't know, in the head canon that I have of this game, like, the boss, um, the, the president, rather, got tired of working at a company where their main work and their main output was frivolous and uh, almost entirely busy work. And so they went into some industry, some sort of business that they could do something material in. Like, this is like the opposite of paperwork, right? Yeah. And uh, this is apparently the frog's expertise, so maybe that's where... Th like, that's something else that's kind of curious is that like this the company is cat and frog yeah but and the, like it's in the color of the pink cat and the green frog so it's like it's definitely them but the frog seems to have a lot less executive authority here yeah that i thought that was interesting too and i was kind of wondering why that was yeah like the frog seems to be so aloof from like the executive side that even when the boss is like talking to him about business matters he's just get it. <laughs> just Definitely. Yeah. The, yeah, because like every time the boss talks, it makes this like rah, 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 noise. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of a Charlie Brown adult sort of thing. Yeah, and like the frog can understand all the other characters. Yeah, and the other characters can understand. Well, I guess everyone can understand him because she yeah. uh, manages to get adequately angry with him. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of strategy, like the bubble and the uh, the bubble and the fire are 
pretty useful for a few spots, but in terms of what's going to really take care of the bosses on the uh, on the regular game, like the wide shot and the laser, uh, or the the wide shot and the starting blasters upgrades, those are the the best ones to get. Really? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. The wide shot helps you clear out space, uh, get you know, kind of get into those corners, and the laser does a lot of focus damage. Nice. So that's what I want. I mean, that's how I relied up on playing it. Yeah. The bubble really only seems to be good for like shooting down, since you can't like look down. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh the fish boss. It's useful on the fish boss, and it's useful on the bird clock boss, which is really great. Yeah. Which we'll get to. <laughs> Frog with a jetpack is such a, a good thing. It is a good thing. This is uh, video games. Video games picking up where nature left off. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a lesson to humanity. We should start. We should start outfitting frogs with jetpacks. Yeah, it's kind of uh, prepare them. Just like make sure each tadpole has like a lighter on the back. Yeah. Or uh, or just like a, a, a match. I used to. I used to try and give frogs like armor and stuff when I was younger. <laughs> like real frogs. Real frogs. Real frogs. Yeah, real what kind frogs. of armor did you try to give them? I'd make it out of like cardboard and stuff, and I'd like <laughs> I'd like cut it so that w that it was their size, and then it would, <laughs> I would just sort of like put them in it. They weren't they as work? far as I could tell. They they did not it did not uh, help them at all. Uh, frogs don't fight they... very many battles. Well, they don't fight battles that you see. This is true. I mean. In all honesty, I mean, if the armor came in useful, they wouldn't be allowed to tell us about it. Oh, frog secrets. Frog secret. Powerful frog secrets. Ooh. I mean, to be honest, you have to have some really... You have to... You need to have a lot of confidence in your frog to let them have the jetpack. It's true. Frankly, I'd need a lot of confidence in anything to give it a jetpack. <laughs> Would you give me a jetpack? I think I'd give you a jetpack if you at least like disclosed the reason. Ah, uh, I don't know. That kind of takes the fun out of having a jetpack. I mean, this. Well, okay. All right. If you at least said something like, if you gave me an idea of what you were doing with the jetpack, you know, like, I could let me know that it wasn't for something that you shouldn't use a jetpack for. Something nefarious? Yes. I don't know. What, uh, nefarious what is fine. Oh, so nefarious is fine. Like, you can use it to, like, rob a bank or something. Yeah. You know, thinking on it, I don't know what I'm against a jetpack being used for. Maybe taking other jetpacks from people. I think I would be against that. Yeah, that's like, you can't wish for a million wishes. Yeah. Except in reverse? You yeah. can't you can't wish Other that nobody else away. get no wishes. Exactly. Yes, exactly. You can't like I mean that's going to screw over the genie. But I, you know what? I bet genies aren't really prepared for that. Like I bet that I bet that never comes up. Like, yeah. I wish that, I wish that nobody else could have any wishes. The genie would be like Oh wow. Never oh man, I'm not that. prepared for that. Yeah. Dick move, open. but like I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes narrow, opens up manual, licks finger, thumb, thumb. Yeah. Fuck, I can't believe this was... Jesus! Well, it's not in here, so I guess you technically can, but, like, really, man? I mean, we were in the conference room for, like, ten hours putting this thing together, and this never once came up? <laughs> I like how the apparently the flame, yeah. like the flame weapon, burst <laughs> out of the um, burst out of the vehicle's like gas tank. Oh wow! <sighs> See, what would I use a jetpack for? I would use a jetpack for putting jetpacks on frogs. Nice. 
Sometimes there, thing. sometimes you have to recognize that you are given something to give to somebody else, like Bilbo giving the ring to Frodo. Like you just gotta, <laughs> you gotta pass it along. Oh, I mean, just make sure you choose the right frog. Yeah, because if you give the wrong frog a jetpack, <laughs> I know. God help us all. Yeah, isn't that an old folk saying? If you give a wrong frog a jetpack. <laughs> It's kind of sitting in a chair enjoying the butterflies of autumn, but one of the butterflies isn't right. <laughs> Butterfly is fat, green, and smells of exhaust. Yeah, other butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is where it's like this. This here in the game is where kind of like the um, I don't know the the metaphorical side of the plot seems to sort of step in the background. And it's it. They start like emphasizing like the materiality of it. Like yeah, yeah. But uh, nice jacket. Yeah, it is a nice jacket. It's uh, the game describes it appropriately as dapper, and I think that frog <laughs> looks pretty swank in it. I think so too. It's got like the fuzzy collar. Those, that's those are like the best. Probably best of the fuzzy part is on the top and not on the fringe because I can imagine that the jetpack would Ooh. you know, you don't want that to maybe that it's a bad. maybe it's like a high waisted I don't know, high waisted, that's probably refers to pants, but maybe it's you know, one of those like a bomber jacket that doesn't like go down straight but it's got kind of like the crinkly expandable part on the bottom that kind of scrunches up like, do you think it would have that's you think it would have drawstrings or something? Because, like... Maybe if it's situationally... Uh, I mean, maybe if it's, you know, made for specific circumstances. Like, if it's a work dapper jacket. Yeah. Then you could pull the strings to scrunch it up. Yeah! Like, if you had a jetpack. But you weren't using it all the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I mean, there it goes. Ah. Uh, well... If you love something, let it go. I don't think that applies to losing it. But... Goodbye into the sky, cool coat. Your home is with another now. I think that might just be a way of making ourselves feel good about a valueless world. That 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 jacket's gone. Oh, oh, I want. I I like that jacket. Sorry, jacket. Ever read Nietzsche? Didn't think so. <laughs> That's really that's really what got Nietzsche started on like all of his writing. <laughs> he lost his jacket. He lost his jacket. He's just like, there's no god. God's dead. <laughs> My jacket is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like the uh, that's the the ace you can pull out in any kind of like philosophical debate. It's like, well, where's my jacket? Ooh. <laughs> that, Your that... values philosopher bites the lower lip. Oh, oh man. How do I... Why didn't my teachers prepare me for this? <laughs> I'm a little... I, I have some questions as to why we're killing these things. I, I mean, at least... Oh, okay, well, yes, they are... They are they're hostile. Sending, they are hostile, but I think they're blowing kisses in their own way. Well, and they're also shooting things at you, and then they try to crush you with their final breath. Oh, not those. Those things are those things deserve to die in every possible universe. Uh -huh. um, I'm talking about the little, uh, the little snow blob things, not the not the bear, not the things hiding in the bears. Like the little ones that are going plop plop. Oh, those. Yeah, they're like blowing little frost kisses at you. Yeah, I don't know. So some of these things, I wonder why, why you've got to kill. Whoa. I wonder what kind of employee training they've got for this. Like, when to shoot. Always. Like, what, always, yep. <laughs> Never not be shooting. That's the, uh, that's the Caro Blaster employee manual. Exactly. Never not be shooting. Your clips don't come back empty. You did a bad job. <laughs> we didn't buy infinite bullets for you to not shoot them. <laughs>
See? There you go. There's the blowing kisses. Oh, yeah, I see them. Which are little sweethearts. Little do they know their kisses are fatal. Well, they're fatal to, to Karotans. Maybe not fatal to them, to, to others of their own kind. Oh, true. Now, fridges! Fridges are evil. Yeah, this is clearly a case of technology going awry where yeah. uh, we tried to play Refrigerator God, and this is what comes of it. Yeah, maybe this, this whole world is actually, like, post-humanity, and we were taken be taken down by our hubris, giving jet frogs jetpacks and animating fridges. No, that's like, uh, that's, that's like, that's, that's like the AI nightmare scenario, right? Yeah. Uh, it all starts with a frog and a jetpack. Right, exactly. Your 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 machine children surpass you, and you should be proud of that. But then, when your frog children surpass you with your jetpacks, then that means that you truly have earned your species' demise. <laughs> oh god! That is something neat about the way the game represents things. Is like the like what could be taken as people in this universe are just kind of blobs, like yeah, green like blobs, green thingies. Yeah. Like not quite, not quite toads or frogs, but also things like, excuse me, <laughs> like things like the uh, the office lady, and the uh, the the people who sell you things. Yeah, uh, they're just like these little squat, little spam blobs. Like these things. Yeah, exactly. It is very nice of them to have a backup jacket there that for you. That is nice. So in terms of strategy, it is very, 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 very important <clears throat> for the final boss in here to have this laser. Really? Which I will explain at the time. I like how the game seems. I, I would I would hesitate to trace this through as like a running theme, but it seems kind of nice how the game seems to go from a spring, summer, winter uh, oh, yeah. cycle. Like if if this is all taking place within like, uh, I mean, assuming this is all taking place within. Ooh, ooh. Wow. Oh, goodbye, jacket. Jacket, I'm sorry, I don't deserve you. Oh, man. You hurt the ones you love. That's true. And I love that jacket. Um, but, uh, what was I saying? Spencer oh, yeah. Yeah, if this is all taking place within, like, a few days, like, these teleporters must be very far flung. Oh, yeah, true. These, creepy. yeah, like I think this might be the first place in the game where those things show up. Yeah. Previously, those sort of like red-eyed, um, red-eyed black blobs only show up at the end near the teleporter when you've got to clear them out. Yeah. And now they're showing up, like just kind of as things are getting progressively worse with your boss and everything. Yeah. Uh, they're becoming, like, hostile instead of just passive and to be dispensed with. But also, it's like, they're not all bad. Yeah. Some of them are just kind of hanging out. Yeah. It's like, if you take in the... If we're taking, like, the metaphorical route of these things representing pieces of your past that you've cast away, like... Not all pieces of the past that you leave behind are bad to leave behind, or, you know, you didn't leave them behind because they were bad. Yeah. Like, they're just, they're just, you know, you age and you move on. 
but sometimes they're malicious. Okay, this boss, I hate this boss so much. You need the laser here, because the laser does a lot of really fast damage. And um, this boss will crush you against the wall during its first phase, oh, if you wow. don't destroy its things fast, yeah. But once you kill it, then uh, once you get those first, uh, that first phase out of the way, it will spin at a regular rate, and you can reliably pinpoint where the little vulnerable spots are going to be. You need the laser, because those little, um, those little tendrils that come out, uh -huh. um, the laser is the only weapon that will fire through them. Otherwise, oh, they're just wow. like a... Yeah, yeah, otherwise they're a barrier um, that... Otherwise they're a barrier that your gun can't go through. Um, so that's like the most reliable way of of handling that. Wow. At least at least from when I played it. Uh, I, I played it using the flamethrower a couple of times, and that is also fun. Does the flamethrower not go through it? No, the flamethrower doesn't go through it. It stops at the at the, the little black tendrils block it. Wow. Almost makes me wonder if the laser thing is an oversight, because it seems like the way that the boss is designed is like you need to be on the side of the thing in order to attack it, but yeah. I'll take what I can get. Oh yeah, this is where things are getting absolutely worse. Oh! Goodbye, Karotan. He got teleported. He got teleported by the creatures. Yeah. This is this is usually not how we enter train stations. No. But I love this stage. Yeah, it's kind of like melancholy. Yeah. You know, this is interesting. It's like, I don't know, like if you're taking it, again, going with a metaphor thing about like a discarded past, you're... Um, you're in the bottom of a train station, but there are all these discarded, uh, discarded clocks, like discarded uh, timekeepers, and memory is related to time in the past. I, I, I don't really. I, that's the thing is like on the taking that as a metaphor. I don't really know like how far to push it or how yeah. far it. Like at what point it just becomes trying to squeeze uh, blood out of a rock. I mean, if you squeeze hard enough, your hand's gonna bleed, so... Uh, I mean, I guess if the blood goes into the rock and then you get it back out, but that's yeah. kind of... If it's I don't like know. porous? That's more like... That's just more like getting... Squeezing blood know. through a rock? Yeah, <laughs> 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 exactly. That's, that's, a, that's a bad return on your investment <laughs> right there. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, blood is like canned meat. I mean, once it's oh, out, <laughs> there's really not a whole lot to do with it. Yeah, you can really only microwave it once before it's no good. Yeah, I mean, the Red Cross will tell you that. Yeah, all these discarded clocks. Oh, and in the song, you can hear, like, a clock ticking. Can you? Yeah. Or there was, uh, in the particular part of the song, there was, like, a tick-tock. Tick-tock. I'll listen to that next time I, uh, go through the OST. The OST on this thing is really great. I mean... Yeah, the music is lovely so far. It's like, yeah, chip tunes are... I, I I have mixed feelings about chip tunes because I am not interested in retro for retro's sake. I don't have that kind of interest in nostalgia. Um, like I lived my childhood and it was great, and I was literally there, and now I'm here, and I yeah. don't need to go back to it. Yeah. But using that for using that old stuff to make something new, like genuinely new, that that excites me, and that's kind of what I feel like this is doing. Is it's it's making something that has mood, has uh, has personality, and isn't trying to ride entirely upon look how old it is. Ooh. Now this is this is this is kind of funny to me. Like the the thing the bo many of the bosses that you fight so far are things that are out of control. And many of the things that are out of control have gone out of control because of like technological failure. This thing was doing just fine. And then you stepped on it. Yeah, exactly. Then I screwed up its antenna, and... It's I, shooting pudding at you. 
This one's on you, Karatan. <laughs> Sure, a lot of those other times, those machines were going awry, but this time, you're the jerk. But at the end of the day, you still got the jetpack, so... So everything's alright. Yeah, you're fine. It's interesting, kind of like the basement of that hotel, you see like vestiges of what this place is supposed to look like when it's functioning ideally. You know, like in the hotel, you've got like all the bookshelves and everything. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, those are appropriately uh, accoutrements of a, of a fine hotel. And here you've got all the little... Oh, okay, this is cool. So look here, now the shop is dithered. Whoa, why? And the and the shop's music has changed. I think that's because things are screwing up. Like, the Ooh. fabric of reality. Like, if if we're, like, taking, like, <laughs> that sort of dithering yeah. or that sort of palette screw-up to represent the screwing up of reality, like, your frog, Karatan, is being transported of these little creatures' own wills. Uh, the president has been, you know, kind of zombie-possessed. And now there's no dithering around the thing in the stage. Oh. But the dithering is... It's Inside. it's in the shop. Yeah, it's like things are things are going wrong, and like even where things were going wrong, like they're still going it, wrong in a new but way. They're, but they're going wrong in ways that you're not controlling. Mm -hmm. That's that's really cool. Ah, uh, this is this is probably my favorite part of the game. This really like melancholy starry night. Yeah. The Melancholy Starry Night and the Empty Train Station, we talked about this a bit yeah. when uh, we watched this before, about kind of that feeling of uh, th that feeling of being in an empty or not abandoned, but like empty place of transport. Yeah. Was it like an empty place of transport or like, or just like buildings where people congregate generally? Uh, I think it was transport or... Yeah, I think it was transport specifically. Whoop. Whoop. Uh, that's one of the problems with frogs. They always have to go through an elevator when they see them. It's really not helping their uh, status as uh, non-endangered species. They're, they're no. really, really inching closer to being endangered. Right. It's like the old proverb. Uh, if you want to catch a frog, put it between two elevators. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's one of those things that is like, it's simultaneously a proverb about life, but also really good advice about frogs. Oh, yeah, exactly. Which, let's be honest, all the best proverbs are. Oh, yeah, about frogs. About frogs, yeah. Yeah. I feel like the sound that they used for the bass of this music, um, it sounds like a, it sounds like a sound or a little chime you would hear on a train platform to indicate that a train has arrived. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh, that clock. Oh, yeah, there's the clock. What what's up with that? I think that like I have two like that that impacts me in two ways. One is that. One in that is that it's kind of like part of an effect of like things going all screwball, like yeah. thing like things ain't right no more. Yeah. Huh. But the other part of it is for me is like one of the things that I really like about it and sort of like capturing the melancholy of a place of transport. It's like if you've ever been like stuck in an airport, <clears throat> or or uh, you know in a bus station or something like that whether it's late or you had to get a uh, a rearranged itinerary yeah like even the shortest amount of time feels long and then sometimes the longest time feels short it's like oh, your yeah. sense of time passing just gets totally screwed up and that's kind of what that means to me 
Hmm. I just love this. I love, I love trains, and I love the sky, and I love bridges, and, and this just has everything that I need. A bridge, a, a sky, and a train. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is maybe my favorite boss design out of all of them. And the bird is, like, coughing up worms at you, I think? Or it's, Just it's pawn. either coughing up worms, or it's, or it's, 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 it has weaponized the chirp. Yeah, I was thinking, like, either it's the worms, or it's going, caw, at you, or something. <laughs> <laughs> God, that clock. It's interesting, because, like, clocks... I haven't thought about this until just now, but it's like, clocks have been all around this level. Oh, yeah. And now it's like, you've got a clock with a bird, and the clock has a scarf. <laughs> like, that's, the, th that's another thing about the way this story presents itself that I think is really cool. Is like, there are certain parts of it that you can enjoy as, like, a as kind of a metaphorical thing. But then there are other parts where it's like, like here, like I don't think that there's any... Oh god, those penguins! <laughs> I love those penguins. Penguins, they're trying so hard. They're hard-working penguins. But yeah, there are, there are like parts of this game where it's like, okay, you can, you can see kind of the metaphorical way of understanding it. But then there are other parts where it's like they've taken some of the, some of the objects that they use for texture. Uh, like maybe that train area is capturing that sort of nowhere, no time feeling of a transport station. Yeah. And and so it sort of uses that to sort of create this like visually interesting boss that doesn't necessarily relate to anything that it's saying about a train station. It's just capping off that atmosphere, which may be part of the point of the design. Or if not, uh, I, well, I would hesitate to say a point of the design, but kind of its effect. Oh, this is so interesting. Yeah, and then it pans back to her and she's like that. Yeah. I don't know why that would be. I think that is... I think that is... Like, I read that as, like, uh, an effect of the affinity between that growing, bloated sort of repressed memory. Yeah. Because if you notice, like, previously, the thing's eyes were just kind of gray and neutral, and like like here, like, you see, like, gray neutral-eyed critters there that are on the benches and everything and not hurting anybody. Yeah. But it's like, the dangerous ones have red eyes. And that thing's eyes turned red when it sort of bound up the, uh, bound up the cat and the office lady. So it's like, uh, I don't know. It's like whatever, whatever, whatever of her that that little blob thing contained. Whoops. Um, it has transformed into something aggressive and out of control now. Yeah. Oh, one of these things. Yeah, that's something also, like, these these guys, um, prior to things getting all screwball, their color is kind of like that green-gray, and now things are, uh, now they are, uh, they're purple, and all these monsters are everywhere, and one can assume that the walk to work is not typically, uh, not typically flooded. typically filled with monsters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> talking about this before, but I love when a game brings back an opening track for the final level. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's what's something that I'm a huge fan of, too, because it's sort of like, it ties everything together, it feels like. Yeah, exactly. It's like, kind of bookends things. Yeah. Can you think of another game that does that? I the only one I can think of is Castlevania 4. I, I know that the Tales of games... Uh, though this is, they aren't very similar to this at all. Does that a <laughs> lot. Uh, they are, like, uh, they almost in every game, if not every game, 
will remix the main theme into like most songs. Uh, and it's it's handled pretty pretty well. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, and then there is a game, Final Fantasy XIV. It's an MMO, but it's actually really really well made. I enjoy it quite a lot. Uh, they there's like this one theme. It's not like the main theme, but it's the theme that plays in like a couple of these like emotional moments at the beginning of the game. Uh, and then later on in the game, it comes back, like, mixed in into this really big orchestral version that's just, like, so good. Actually, I think they did that with Persona 4 also. Yeah, they did. They did. Like, they used the, um... They used kind of the melody from the, uh, kind of a tracked mode. Yeah. Uh, a tracked mode animation. In the final boss fight as an orchestral theme. Yeah. Did you play Persona 3? Yes! I think they did that in 3, too, when you're fighting Nyx. Like, right really? at the very end. I don't remember a lot about that game. I was going to replay it, and... Like, I was going to replay it, and... I had deleted my New Game Plus file. Oh, no. And I didn't want to start off, like, with my Personas and everything back at zero. Yeah. So I had my save file right before Nyx, right before the final boss. So I was like, okay, New Game Plus happens after... Oh, no, 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 wait, I did have my New Game Plus file, but I named my character something stupid. Oh. That I, did, that I didn't want to, you know, main, remain committed to for a replay. Yeah. So I decided, okay, you know what, I'm going to beat the game again, get my New Game Plus option started, uh, you know, reset, and, and that'll be a good playthrough. And then I watched the cutscenes, and I beat Nyx, and I'm like, oh, well, I guess I don't need to play it through anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw the end. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you're just destroying these bosses, or these things that used to be bosses so easily. Yeah. Convini. Convini. Yes. Ninja. You can, um... You can make it through this game without killing most of the enemies that I've killed. Uh -huh. But one of the reasons why I go out of my way to kill uh, many of them is to get Money? coin drops, because I need, like... If I'm, if I'm not upgrading my health, which I'm not here, of course. Ouch. Yeah. Um, then... There are three weapons I need to upgrade. I need to upgrade the water, the bubble, so I can, you know, get through the fish boss faster. Because uh, that is the only uh, way, I, I mean, in my experience playing it, that is the only really practical weapon to use against it. Um, and so you you can only upgrade that once. So there's that, and then you want to, then I want to get this and the laser up to max. So, like, as you can see, like, I got, without spending any money on any health upgrades, um, I am you know, just a little bit over the amount of money that you need to, to get all those things. Yeah. And so, like, killing every enemy to try to get as much money as possible is uh, key to that. And there's our jacket! Yes! I like how you come in through, like, the basement, like, the storage closet, and you get the jacket. Yeah. I like how happy Karo Ten is when he gets the jacket. It's a good jacket. It is a good jacket. It's a good Karo Ten. It is a good Karo <laughs> thing I think that is kind of funny is like the idea that uh, one president's repressed memories or repressed emotions or whatever are uh, somehow capable of causing uh, causing a citywide collapse and oh, yeah. like infestation. There's pretty powerful repressed memories. Yeah. Well, I mean. Office work, man. Office work sounds awful. The third floor where they keep the incendiaries. 
<laughs> Bombs so volatile they are somehow able to be set on fire by water. Oh god. <laughs> no coat. Jacket. No hurt life. Uh. This game made me realize something. Like when this is okay. So you know when you're at full health in a video game, yeah, and you get you know you got like a little heart that pops up and you get it anyway, or when you're at full money, yeah, and you know you get a coin drop or something and you're like you go for it anyway, <laughs> yeah. I've decided I'm no longer calling that like um, I'm no longer calling that excess. I'm calling that one for good luck. <laughs> nice. Like, here's hoping I don't need this. Nice. I generally... I do it kind of like as habit building. Huh. I guess, to like always grab that stuff whenever I see it. Practice. Exactly, it's practice. And here's where we save our Ooh. boss from her own demons. I think this is a pretty good last boss, as far as last bosses go. I also think, like, I also really like how with Zangyo mode, they did not uh, take the same boss pattern and just kind of like... Holy crap, that damage. Yeah, that's why you want the laser. Holy crap. But yeah, they didn't just like take the same boss and like go into the HP field and just like type plus 500 yeah, or something. right. Because by the time that by the time that you're good enough to beat the boss like this, uh to pat myself on the back, <laughs> You've already gone through the learning process, and you've already you've already experienced the challenge, and the challenge is of, is really um, getting to enjoy the failure and learning how to overcome it. And so, there's really not much point in like just like making it longer at that point. True. Uh, d hard mode, like it, it changes the pattern. You said right. Uh, hard mode has a different boss. Don't... Don't you fight this one, too, I thought? No. No, you fight... You fight another business person. Oh. But not... Oh, okay. I'm remembering now. For some reason, I thought that you, like, ran through it and then did the other thing. No. No, this is the only difficulty that has that. I like how she just gets up and with absolute composure and dignity... Walks back into the office. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, she has been brewing a, uh, I, I, like, the way I'm reading this is, like, she kind of, like, doesn't really remember a lot of this stuff, and she is kind of pissed off that, at Custodian Salary Man, yeah. <laughs> that this giant piece of trash is in her office. Okay, okay, this is also where it's, like, the video gaminess is, <laughs> Yeah, uh, it shoots out the ones and zeros and the errors yeah yeah like in terms of like things getting screwed up this is this is a pretty tough um this is a pretty tough uh tough final boss not necessarily in the first phase but it's like uh, well actually even also in the first phase because there are just so many parts of the screen you have to keep an eye on yeah like the ground is dangerous with those little critters and when it gets into its second phase and it starts shooting out the error messages. It's they've got a they, you know they're larger. Their patterns are more erratic. There are multiples of them, and you've got to do some really fancy footwork whoa, to whoa, uh, whoa. to keep from uh, like this here. Like, uh, oh my gosh, you're like threading the needle through all of these. Exactly. Like, oh god. Holy crap. Yeah, and when the thing takes on the uh, 
the uh, 2001 Space Odyssey monolith form. That's where it's like my ability to even interpret this as metaphorical just kind of like blows straight up. (laughs) (laughs) And then it became a then it became a demonic hard drive. Well. Oh, Karatan gave his last ounce of energy. No, Karatan. This cat Aww. is on the ball. This is where the president reflects upon her personal journey that she went through during this entire ordeal. <laughs> yeah. I love this ending for some reason. We actually talked about a little bit about this earlier in private. Like, Karatan's on a body cast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, like, at the end here, um, they tell him, good job. And then it's like, well, we'll see you back at the office. And then when you start a new game plus, it gives you a cake. Yeah. And so it's like, Karatan did an exceptional job for what his job was. At the same time, he was also just doing his job, and everybody knows that that's why he's there. So it's like he it's like his they're showing appreciation, but they're not gushing and fawning right, all over like him. They congratulate they, him, but for the job that he was supposed to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not in excess of that precisely because that's his job. Exactly. That's one of the things I love about this game, is that, like, work is such a core part of human existence. I mean, it's like an entire, you know, an entire part of, like, the book of Genesis, like, the very first chapters is devoted to explaining why we have to work. Yeah. Like, work is that big of a deal. And it's like, there are so few at least, especially in terms of video games, there there are so few things that meditate and reflect on that. Like, at the end of Candide, uh, Voltaire's, you know, his conclusion at the end of Candide is that, yes, our purpose in life is, you know, to be happy, tend to your work. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, I mean, I don't want to say that that's the point of this game, but that's very much in there, is that a large part of happiness in life is doing your job. Um, and sort of like maintaining that balance between doing doing a good job that you're supposed to do versus, you know, just remaining a soulless, you know, having your soul sapped out of you by mindless busy work. Yeah. Uh, that tension feel to me feels like that's in, in this game. And uh, I really like seeing that explored. I do too. Yeah. No, I definitely do too. I, I also like seeing a cat in a lab coat. I, I'm sorry, I go on. That. No, I love seeing a cat in a lab coat. Uh, a slow cat in a lab a coat. slow cat. Um, but yeah, no, I something I always like is making the magnificent mundane. Uh, and that's kind of like, they have made going out on these... They basically made Mega Man into a 9 to 5, is what they did. <laughs> <laughs> like, instead of being this incredible journey by this little robot boy who's going around shooting lasers out of his hands and killing uh, the bad robots. It's about this frog who's working a 9-to-5 job that is just, like, it is going on adventures and stuff. Right. I don't know why that appeals to me. I think but that says it all, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but that brings us to the end of our uh, playthrough of Carol Blaster, at least on normal mode, uh, Zangyo mode should be uh, coming in the future. Uh, you know, time pending. But uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody. And have a good night. Woo! Good night. <laughs>